the last video we talked a bit about sound and specifically we said that sound always requires a medium to travel in. It also transfers energy so the particles within that medium are not traveling themselves but we've got to transfer energy from one particle to the next. The transfer of energy and then we also have the amplitude. We said the amplitude was the height and the amplitude was the same as saying the volume. So for example, if this was really high, that meant it was a loud volume because it was high amplitude. Whereas if the from the bottom here to the top, if this was lower, then it would be a lower amplitude, which would also mean a lower volume. And then we also talked about wavelength, and we said wavelength was from one peak, this is one peak, to the next peak. This is the wavelength. So for example, if we compare this kind of wave with this kind of wave, you can see the wavelength of this one would be more than uh, that one. So that's wavelength and amplitude. And we said that frequency was waves per second. So if you compare this diagram to this diagram, you can see here are three waves. Here's one wave. So this would have a higher frequency than this one. This one would be three hertz. And this one would be one hertz, for example, right? So it would be having a higher frequency because there's more wavelengths. So there's a connection between frequency and wavelengths. The higher the wavelength, the higher the frequency. And also important to realize is that frequency determines pitch. What pitch was, which is the la the um the pitch was if it's really high frequency, you have like a high pitch voice like that. Eh. Whereas if it's a low frequency, it's more of a because sound-wise, it's more of a lower sound, like rrr kind of thing. So that's the pitch. So the more, the higher the frequency, so the more waves are, the higher the pitch. Whereas the lower the frequency, lower the wave, uh, the higher the wavelength, the lower the frequency, the lower the pitch. So it's low pitch means high wavelength and low frequency. Whereas high pitch means high frequency and low and high wavelength. All right, so next is we actually have to talk about dot point. Dot point says explain that sound is produced by vibrating objects and that frequency of the sound produced is the same as the frequency of the vibration of the source of the sound. So if you talk about how sound actually gets produced, how the production of sound, and that's what we're going to talk about now. And you often, you, when you talk about sound, you often see two diagrams. You see this kind of diagram, that's sound production. And you see these kind of waves. Both of these are examples, more or less, of sound. This here is the waveform, which is easy to kind of understand. But what's happening when it comes to sound is more uh, a refraction compression. Compression means they're all compressed. So you can see here that all these particles are compressed. That's what we call a compression. And basically, they just make this whole top diagram into a waveform. So the compressed area will be the peak, the top will be the compressed area, whereas the refraction, so the middle part, is going to be when it goes down and there's less sound, right? So the high sound, most sound, is when we have lots of these together, and that's called a compression. So that's a compression. And the other one, if they are spaced apart, far spaced apart, that means we've got a less volume, less amplitude as well, and you can see that by the actual curve or the graph being at the low amplitude. So low amplitude is refraction, high amplitude is compression. But we still have to talk about how these different um, things actually happen. So how the compressions and how the refractions actually occur, what makes them happen. And that's what we're going to talk about now. So we're going to talk about the production of sound because stop point says we need to talk about the production of sound, how that actually is linked to vibrating objects. And then the, the frequency of the vibrating object is the same as the frequency the sound being produced. Right, so for example, let's say this is a speaker. So in this example on top here, we have a speaker, and this is meant to be that same speaker, right? So the speaker works by having electricity go and reach a speaker. So we've got electrical energy, electrical energy being transformed into mechanical energy. And that happens because this electrical energy will actually tell the speaker, so this part here, the gray part, will vibrate. It will go up, back and forth, back and forth, when there's electricity that gets sent to it, right? So the electricity will 
change from electrical energy to mechanical energy, and that will make this vibrate back and forth. Now what's happening here is you can see what I've chosen, I've chosen two different colors of molecules. One of them is the, are the original molecules, which have this darkish um, blue, whereas the adjacent molecules, the molecules next to it, are in lighter blue. So these are meant to be the original molecules, the ones here, which are at the moment inside the speaker. And you've got here, we've got the adjacent molecules, which are just next to it. But they're basically just meant to be air. We've got air here, right? So it's just, these might be oxygen molecules, or nitrogen dioxide molecules, or, sorry, nitrogen gas molecules, or carbon dioxide molecules, whatever is in the air itself. That's what these are. But what's happening here is when, they, so first, we've got them all side by side. They're spread out even. So first, we've got them spread out. The medium here are these air particles, but they're really spread out. There's no pattern that can be recognized, right? So if you look at the pattern up, up on top here, this is not happening here at the moment. At the moment, they're all spread out quite evenly. What, ha what happens in the second step is now we've activated the speaker. So we're pushing electricity through, and that's making these metal parts vibrate. So they're vibrating. And when they vibrate, they pass on their energy onto the particles around it, right? So because now, beforehand, they were all evenly spaced. Now, because this part is vibrating, it's basically pulling all of them in and making them vibrate too. So now I can see beforehand they were evenly spaced. Now, all of a sudden, we have one area, which is close to the speaker, which is the compression area. Because now everything's really compressed because we had some vibrations happening. And what happens next is that step two, was the vibrations are created by the by the speaker and the medium is now compressed. So parts of it are compressed. And you can see here these parts, there's less molecules than there were beforehand. That will be the refraction part. What's happening next in the third step is we actually have this compression part moving in the direction of the adjacent molecule. So these molecules here were also there, they were they weren't affected or they weren't uh, touched by that first step, by the refraction, by the compression. But now these are going to move in the direction of the other particles. And what happens next is these particles will kind of bump into the other ones. And by bumping in, that's where the transfer happens. So you can see here, basically between three and four is a transfer of energy. So what's important is now this part is compressed so that the, the, the the adjacent molecules, they're compressed, whereas the other ones have popped back into shape that they were originally in. Right? So this one is back to normal, more or less. Back to normal. Whereas the other part is now compressed. So what we're saying, that's what I mean by transfer. Um, this molecule, so the, the ones that are here, have moved to the other side. Right? So here, this was here beforehand, now we've got them here. But the movement here hasn't happened because the molecules have moved, but because the, the energy within these molecules has moved. So once they bump, once these guys bump into the other molecules, these molecules will lose their energy and give that energy to the other molecules, which means they pop back into the original shape. And the other molecules are now compressed. And this will happen again, so now these guys will move and give the energy off to the next molecules, and on so forth and so on, and like on, it just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, right? So the idea is that when it comes to sound production, we have these molecules, more or less, they just move a tiny bit, they don't move much. All they do is they move until they transfer the energy to the next molecule, and then the next molecule transfers in the molecule, uh, the energy to that next molecule, and so on, so forth, and so forth, right? So basically, what I'm trying to say is we've got this compression and refraction. The refractions are created because when you've got a compression, there's some areas where there's going to be less, some area where there's going to be more. That just happens when we've got stuff being compressed. And we've got a transfer energy. Now, the other part was that we've, we're talking about the frequency. So the frequency of the sound being of the source, so the speaker, the frequency of the speaker will be the same as the frequency of the sound being produced. Because, for example, let's say if this is beating 5 hertz per second, if that vibrating metal part is being 5 hertz per second. That means that <coughs> these sound waves that are produced are also going to be 5 hertz per second because whenever there's one created, then they're going to move their energy on to the next one. 
but then they pop back into place afterwards. They're going to be back into the original place and ready for the next vibration. Right? So if it's vibrating at 5 hertz per second, that means that these waves here are also going to be 5 hertz per second. So that was, that's what that meant. The whole idea of the actual um, source, so in this case the speaker, the frequency of the source being equal to the frequency of the sound waves being produced. Um, so these four steps are probably good steps to know because it says explain, so you need to be able to kind of explain. First step, we said that sound requires a medium to travel. So you can see these air particles here, that's your medium that the sound will travel in. Second part is vibration creates compression within the medium. So here we have the, these metal pieces have been activated because electricity has, has changed from electri electrical energy into mechanical energy, which is making these vibrate. And now the vibrations is making these compression sections happen. And when there's compression, there's also going to be refraction, which is that more that space where it's less now. That's the second part. And the third part is the energy of the compression waves are transferred from one set of particles to other set of particles. Right, so these guys will now be moving their energy towards the adjacent molecules, these molecules here. What's happening is the molecules aren't moving far, but it's more the energy is being transferred. Right, so once they actually have hit the particles over there, then they have lost their energy, which means they pop back into place. And these guys are now compressed, but then that keeps going on and on and on, and that's how the wave travels. So the fourth step was the medium pops back into place. The particles of the medium pop back into shape. They're elastic, that's what we call popping back into shape. They're elastic which means these guys are ready to go again. So when the next time when this um, metal part vibrates, the whole thing will start again. So what, the, what that means is whatever the frequency, whatever the um, frequency of the metal part that's vibrating is, so the source of the sound, it's going to be the same frequency of the actual waves created by that source. But I hope that was useful.